Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. They just released Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse on home video in a whole bunch of deleted scenes, an entirely different ending in a deleted post credit scene, so we'll break it all down. Also explain what's going on with Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse, the sequel. It's been delayed a little, but we knew that was going to happen, so it's not a huge surprise. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. I'm giving away a couple copies of Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse on digital, too. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and post your favorite Easter egg for the movie in the comments. At the end of the movie, Miles is captured by Earth-42 Aaron Davis and Earth-42 Miles Morales, who has become the Prowler on his Earth because he wasn't bitten by that original spider that gave Miles his powers. The spot was responsible for performing the initial reactor test, and during that, he pulled the spider from Earth-42 to the Ultimate Universe, where it bit Miles Morales instead. So at the end of the movie, they tease a reckoning of sorts between Earth-42 Miles and the main Miles Morales for everything that happened or went wrong for him as a result of that. And probably one of the bigger surprises from the movie is that they didn't have a traditional post credit scene like the first movie, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. There were so many Easter eggs, like so many deep cuts that they worked into the movie. It was so complex, you could watch it like a billion times and still see new Easter eggs in the background. You would have thought that they would have had at least a couple post credit scenes to top the post credit scenes from the first movie. Now Lord and Miller said that they actually did create a post credit scene and then decided at the last minute to remove it, just leaving things with the Miles Morales will return in Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse tag. The deleted post credit scene would have been a funny moment for the spot, paying off a joke from earlier in the movie with his character. Earlier in the movie, after he discovers how his powers work, how his holes work, hey, my holes, giving him the ability to portal anywhere in time and space, including across dimensions, there's a montage of him going to all the different universes, I've already done a big Easter eggs video breakdown of all this, so I'll post a link down in the description below. But like it goes to the Lego universe, the live action Venom crossover, a bunch of others. Once he figures out that he needs to top himself off, like he runs low on power, like he starts to lose his holes as he uses up more power, he does that, but he's still not that powerful yet. He had just gone on this big tear with Miles Morales about how he wasn't just a villain of the week. That guy, he's barely a villain of the week. What'd you call me? You realize I'm right Come here. On. You'll finally have a villain worth fighting. And I won't be just a joke to you! You're not a joke! Right, gang? Absolutely completely on the music! I don't believe in comedy! Just kidding! See? No one here thinks you're a joke! They won't after this. And to sort of pump himself up as a villain, like he wants to think of himself as a big time villain, he decides to get a drink from the infamous secret villain hideout called the Bar with No Name. Passwords, let me the hell in, you idiot! <laughs> Good one. I've been working on it. <laughs> the bar with no name. Watering hole for New York's most notorious criminals. Last time I went in there, the fight lasted most of Labor Day weekend. It's a bar from the Spider-Man comics where villains just go to hang out. He wanted to show the other Spider-Man villains that he was a big shot too, but he sits at the bar and he can't get the bartender's attention to actually get himself a drink for the life of him. So the joke is that nobody at the bar with no name, none of the other villains, care about him or notice him at all. And he had just yelled at Miles Morales about this, which he also does later in the movie, when he says he'd finally be somebody with all these extra dark matter upgrades when he made himself more powerful. When he's at the bar the first time, he finally steals a drink using his holes and pours it down. It leaks out of his other holes like he can't actually consume anything. They said this was meant to pay off some of the visual metaphor of his character, like trying to fill a hole in his heart with more holes. Not a great method. So all the other Spider-Man villains start laughing at him. And most of the other villains that were there at the bar are villains that you see in the montages earlier in the movie. So he leaves the bar with no name in disgrace that first time, kind of getting laughed out. He goes to a couple other worlds, getting more dark matter, getting more powerful. Eventually, they have the events on Spider-Man India's world in Moombatten. He gets the huge power upgrade, and that's the last we see of him in the theatrical cut. In the deleted post credit scene, they would have shown him portaling back to the bar with no name, and he sits proudly in the coveted booth, as they called it, like the place of honor at the bar reserved for the most feared villains like Kingpin. He calls out all the previous Spider-Man villains that had made fun of him and then dispatches them like big bar fights. So they ended in a giant bar fight. This is what they actually said about the bar with no name when they were putting it in the movie. Even hardened supervillains need a safe space where they can drink their cares away in the company of Spider-Man's ever-growing number of enemies. First introduced in Captain America number 318, cover date June 1986, 
New York City's Bar With No Name is precisely such a spot located in an abandoned subway station. The bar is where we see Spot interact with Hammerhead and some of the other bad guys while a tough-as-nails bartender Delilah keeps an eye on him and encourages him to stand up for himself. Incidentally, the shady underworld types are not allowed to practice their superpowers while they're on the premises. Spot, however, breaks the rules by showing some of his portal creating skills to Grizzly, Jack, Lantern, Hammerhead, and some of the shady types at the joint. Our character designers went back to the original comics to include a diverse group of characters and featured them in this bar scene. It was a lot of fun deciding which supervillains to include. We wanted them to be updated, but definitely identifiable versions of some familiar characters. There was also a big deleted scene of Earth-42 Miles practicing with Aaron Davis, teaching him to become the Prowler like the younger Earth-42 Miles Morales before he became the Prowler officially as he was trying to learn the ropes. Where Aaron Davis is still the Prowler, you can see him in his suit here, teaching a slightly younger looking Miles G. Morales as they're calling him. That's what they're calling this Prowler version of Miles from Earth-42. And it looks like they're stealing medical supplies from the Sinister Six cartel and giving them to his mother at her hospital just because she doesn't have enough to treat her patients. Like, she's very thankful, but doesn't completely realize what's actually going on. Like, oh, some vigilante left me supplies. There was also some tie-in material in some of the art books that they released that teased what's going on with this Miles G. Morales alternate reality Prowler version of the character, too. Confirming that he's kind of a Robin Hood type of character, vigilante, stealing to help his mother, stealing from the rich aka the Sinister Six cartel, giving to the poor. And if you look at a lot of his moves too, they're very Spider-Man-like in the way that he's web-slinging around, kind of, using Prowler tech, almost doing the exact same thing. He looks very similar, or his moves look very similar to the regular Miles Morales Spider-Mans. He just doesn't have any actual webbing, so he's using practical technology. And it seems like his mother in this reality in Earth-42 doesn't know that he's becoming the Prowler or has become the Prowler. She probably only knows that there's a vigilante out there that calls themselves the Prowler that's in the news who helps her, gives people things that they need. But just like regular Miles Morales' mother, she also hasn't totally figured out that this Miles G. Morales, her Miles Morales, hasn't become the Prowler on their world. So a lot of people were wondering what's going to happen after the end of Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse because they tease this big fight between the two of them like he's slowly escaping using his shocker ability. It's meant to be a big callback to Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse where Peter B. Parker used his abilities to escape while Miles was talking to him. Here's lesson number one, kid. Don't watch the mouth. Watch the hands. <laughs> So Miles is going to start Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse doing the same thing, escaping from this situation. And even though the way they play the music, like the big reveal, they want you to think like Miles G. Morales is a villain. The idea is that they're trying to tell you through all these tie-ins and these teasers that really he's a vigilante. He's not an outright villain. That was what the regular Miles Morales Spider-Man was talking to Earth-42 Aaron Davis about before he realized what was really going on. He was trying to tell him about his uncle Aaron before he died. He wanted to be good, but he didn't know how. So they want to let you know that that's kind of going on with this Miles G. Morales Prowler version of the character. So a lot of people were wondering if they're actually going to fight or if they're going to take a hard left turn and just surprise everyone and he won't be a villain. Like he'll actually help this version of Spider-Man Miles Morales. My early theory in some of my previous videos is that he would eventually do that, but there'd be like a small fight. Like you have to have them fight just a little bit. But the end game idea is that Prowler Miles Morales, Miles G. Morales, is not going to wind up being a villain. My other early theory is that he would eventually wind up fighting the Sinister Six cartel on his Earth, and they would set those group of characters up as bigger villains on Earth-42. And they won't walk back Miles Morales' spider bite or anything like that. Like, he'll go back to his ultimate universe, Earth. But at the end of the day, Miles G. Morales will just continue becoming a better version of the Prowler and become more of a good character, so to speak, more of a traditional good character, trying to defeat the Sinister Six cartel. They're a real big group, super powerful on this Earth, so it's not something that he would completely wrap up during Beyond the Spider-Verse. Like, he would just continue fighting the Sinister Six cartel on his Earth into adulthood. So part of the idea is that even in an alternate reality, even though things went completely terrible for him, like his father died, he didn't become Spider-Man, the traditional type of hero, things still worked out like he's still good in this reality fundamentally. There was a longer character description for this Prowler Miles Morales too that they released. So it says, Miles G. Morales, aka the Prowler, is the alternate reality version of Miles who grew up completely different from him. This version of the character was never bitten by a radioactive spider and doesn't have any superpowers, but he has fallen into the role of becoming a vigilante, the Prowler. Notice that they say vigilante, not villain. 
Under the tutelage of his uncle Aaron, Miles comes face to face with his other version of himself and realizes that because one thing dropped the other way, everything has changed due to the butterfly effect, where one small change can later result in larger changes to a deterministic, nonlinear system. In this case, an entire reality, says director Justin K. Thompson, internally we decided to call this parallel world version Miles G. Morales to avoid confusion. So I think that just confirms that we'll see like a very brief Miles versus Miles G. Morales at the beginning of Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse until they both realize what's going on. Like, oh, we're not bad people. We want to help each other. The other big thing that they tease much earlier in the film, too, is that Miles leaves his mother, like this is the last time that he sees her in this movie, saying that he promised that he would come back and he promised that he would have a nice cake that's not all messed up. So early prediction is that's how they end Beyond the Spider-Verse. They stop the spot from collapsing all of reality. Spider-Man 2099 comes around on him and finally leaves him alone. And they have some shawarma tag scene at the end of the movie where he comes home to his parents with an ice cake and introduces them to the rest of his friends that he mentioned at the beginning of Across the Spider-Verse. And they all eat cake that he brings back with him, including Spider-Ham. Like it would be funny to see his parents meeting Spider-Ham. It can get weirder. He was also trying to tell his parents his secret identity like he was about to tell his mother a couple times. Then he tells the wrong Earth-42 mother. He'll probably tell his parents that he is Spider-Man at the end of the movie too. And the other Easter egg here is also for this Earth-42 version of Miles, like the Prowler Miles being the other cake in the equation. Like the two different cakes are the two different Miles. Can't have your cake and eat it too. Unless you bake two cakes. Miles' wow. interest in comedy. Earlier in the movie, his guidance counselor is telling him about this metaphor for his future and being a cake and trying to bake this good cake. And he's like, well, what if you just bake two different cakes? You could have your cake and eat it too. Just another Easter egg foreshadowing, I think, the two of them working together. We'll probably start getting some more Beyond the Spider-Verse teasers later this year. So, of course, I'll do more videos as we see more Easter eggs or deleted scenes. So leave all your requests in the comments below. Click here for my Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse teaser trailer video and click here for my brand new Loki Season 2 trailer video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.